sekali started off over a killing, a murder of one of our own Bougainvillean women. She was a nurse and she was murdered by plantation workers. The moment the, um, the, the, the woman was pronounced dead, the nurse was pronounced dead, I got a word from Francis Ona saying, I am no longer listening to you. I am no longer going to be listening to the provincial government and also to the national government. This war is now going to become a war for independence. We cannot allow, we cannot allow um, people outside of Bougainville coming and murdering and butchering, you know, our own women, our own people. I call it a war because, you know, the PNG Defence Force was mandated to come, you know, to come to Bougainville and shoot to kill. So. To me, it's it's like a, you know, it, it's a war, not a crisis. It went beyond the crisis and conflict situation. In a region named after peace, many Pacific Islanders had no idea of the real extent of the tragedy unfolding in Bougainville. For Bougainville, the economic prosperity from being the copper mine jewel in the crown of Papua New Guinea had its dark side. Social and environmental change threatened many Bougainvilleans. By the time former mine employee Francis Honor turned landowners against the Australian-owned mine and forced it shut down, Bougainville was ripe for conflict. Enahakwa and her family had been amongst those who left in 1990, before the Papua New Guinea blockade cut Bougainville off from the world. You know, when you think of home, you think of all the things that are familiar to you. And for me, all the things that are familiar are here. If I were to bring my husband to my home, it would be to Bougainville, not really to Mosby. <laughs> Arava town was a paradise on its own. It was something that was, uh, was so beautiful. Everything was just there for everybody to enjoy. I can remember people running around and mothers and children crying and everybody was just didn't know what to do. We never thought the Bougainvilleans, the way that they are, we always thought that Arau would become a huge regional centre. It would become a big city we would have. Do you know that Panguna was actually planned to be a, a university centre when the mine closed? The unfortunate victims, you know, that caught themselves in a crossfire uh, were women in most cases, and of course children in most cases. Many, of course, died from you know, unavailability of medicine. Many died because of complications of, um, of childbirth. Uh, many, many died because of you know, uh, rape and, you know, and, and murder in some cases. The women were crying almost every day and night. The women were deprived of many things, of their freedom, of not being able to control their sons. The most grave suffering that they went through is that when women 
refused to give up the, that beautiful virtue of womanhood. And many of them suffered and died. There are some who suffered and struggled, but are still alive today. But for those who have died, there's no one to tell their story. In Bougainville, widows are not just those whose husbands have died. They include the many more women whose non-Bougainvillian husbands had left because of the crisis and never returned. Orphans are children who've lost one or both parents to the war. They're also children whose mothers were impregnated during rapes committed by soldiers from both sides of the conflict. There's no way of knowing just how many widows and orphans are living in Bougainville today. In the midst of all the development and peace building, women and children are still trying to speak for themselves on how a society which prided itself on being innovative, successful and matrilineal fell apart. One of them whom I can mention, her name's Merita. She's from um, Panguna. She was shot dead on her head because she, was, she refused to have sex with an enemy. And my own sister, my blood sister, who is second last born in the family, was messed up very badly because she refused to have sex with nine soldiers. The last one came in, told her to get all, all her clothes off to be naked, and she said to him, I've never been naked in front of anyone. And he said to her that he'll shoot her, and she said, give me five minutes. She knelt down, she prayed, and then when she stood up, she said to him, now you can shoot me. But then he trembled, and the gun fell, fell down, and she shouted. And the people on the other side heard, and even the leader of the, those PNG army came over. But then they, were recon they reconciled after that. One time I asked my, my, my eldest son, he's 18 years, I mean, I asked him, what? What is it that made you, what makes you sad when you think about the crisis? He told me, Mother, I still recall the time when the BRS came to our house and, and harassed you out of the house and took you into the bushes. The lady whom I went with up into the bush, I mean, whom they took with me, when we came back, she was raped by... I don't know how many of them, maybe five of them, five peep, five boys went in. She was, a, she was a newly married woman and um, she was with her husband in the house. And these, peep, these guys came and took the husband out from their house. During the height of this crisis, here we know, I mean, there, were, there were women who uh, fought who had children, you know. Even today they're not married, just because they had a child during the crisis. So these are the ones that they're really suffering to, I know. I'm, uh, because of the shame and, you know, they, they, they're so disadvantaged, you know. They don't talk about their needs, they don't talk in the public. So what, what the crisis has done to them is, you know, you just can't believe it. I mean, it's, they're just staying in the village now. The experiences people shared showed that no matter what part of wartime Bougainville families were in, whether it was the care centres, village homes, or in the BRA-controlled areas, people shared the same stories. Women, children, the elderly, and men who did not want to fight were under attack from both sides. No one was safe, whether sleeping at night or looking for food by day. It did not matter anymore how the crisis had started. New enemies were created and reasons for fighting and hating changed by the day. Even look we all say Bougainville now, I will pipe back one time Bougainville because Brata Blomi and Ben Depends now, all some old relatives Blomi, all live in Biare. And one day, some of my men came back after operation very happy, saying that we have killed one of the enemy. 
and but they didn't talk about it that uh, that much for some reason they didn't describe give me the details and uh, later I found out that the person they described in as the enemy was a member of the resistance force and he was my wife's cousin so it, I was faced in a difficult position whether to cry as a leader for the enemy or uh, not to cry in front of my men or cry for my brother-in-law. Me play being walk with the uh, guns firing. So it be being hard straight uh, Now all communication was whatever it being cut off. When they were firing, all the bullets were coming through our village from very low level, a level that uh, it can shoot a person, you know, walking, and above the, the roof, because in the night you can see the bullet flying, and it flies like a firefly, yeah, but it's in a very fast uh, speed. My brother went to Lelaho. He used to work there with SHRM to pick up his pay. He goes there to pick up his pay, and he, he was grabbed by the Papua New Guinea soldiers and termed as a militant or a BRA. Put in the car, his hands were tied at his back, his eyes were tied with a piece of lap lap or a piece of clothing, D driven down to um, Aropa Airport, was bashed up, all his teeth were bashed out by the barrel of the gun, there were knife wounds all over his body and finally shot dead. One old lady went to the camp, staking her donuts to sell to the PNG soldiers and she didn't know. All of us didn't know what happened because we were thinking that it was just their usual thing, you know, firing the guns. And she went there and she was surprised to see all these 15 men lying flat on the ground with all their the skin, part of the skin being cut and their hair were hanging, cuts around their bodies, removed all their trousers and even cut their, their men, you know. And she couldn't say anything. And the PNG soldiers were asking her if she could identify if they were boys from Tin Puts. But she couldn't recognize them. The saddest part of it is that we are not landowners to Bogan Bill Copper Mine. My brother who died had no five toy in his tummy. But he was killed, an innocent man. And I'll never forget my mother saying, Francis Ona, where are you? Why wouldn't you defend my son? My son grew up with the money that I sweat, the sweat from my bro. I paid his school fees, I made copra. Not from the copper mine. We don't receive any compensation. That's the saddest part. And it's not just my brother. My brother-in-law, my nephew, my cousin, six of them were shot dead in just one day. They were insisting to take the bodies and throw them out in the ocean. My grandfather stood by and told them, you know, you are a fighter, you are soldiers, you are both soldiers, and you have killed each other. And I am not a soldier, I'm not your enemy. I'm just a villager, I'm not a soldier. Whatever you did, you've done it. But the bodies, leave the bodies, and I will go and give them a decent burial. And uh, they brought them in, Just piled them, you know, like pigs or animals lying in there, piled up in the back of the truck. It is a scene that I will never forget. One blood time, him, living spray, all army living spray, ego, na all be a ritual living spray. Me play being stopped in the mail street. Because me plan no sabe one in by happen lo me plan, but close to me plan being run away, one wa pull him all picking him about. Me 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 hard straight on by me must explain him. 
Mi plats just sleep nothing. Mi take him mama's five hours time only walk long shoot out. Mi talk him meal. Mi plats in karai one time. This plats time mi got two plats bikini twins. One plats dead. Papa blow mi plats kissing. One another plats mi been kissing. Mi plats just spoon down number out. Up and down, up and down. Mi plats roll or some plats old stone number out. Because something I may come up time because time me play no meaning or saying something by come up, huh? I may set stories there. This play all day me play no being kai kai. Me play being bell blow, me play being pull up, long pour it. During the crisis, um, we had to cross these rivers, number of rivers, especially in the night. I mean, I had three children, mother of small children, three. I had to decide what things to carry. So this is what agent, I mean, basic stuff, because I wouldn't be moving with, with the whole house. Long, long, side long was in my clothing, so I was able to use my lemon. Long was was too, I was able to use my head, I was able to cross one time on lemon. So I'm a good plan. Time we plan come long long kind river all the same. We plan must carry more long picking any long little picking any. We plan must carry more long backside. Na all long big plan little little Papa blow all carry more long shoulder blow. Na we plan cross. Some plan have long water he deep too much. So we plan must look look long one him have him water he no deep too much. Na we plan cross. I'm being worried straight because I got all the picking me below me. Time you pitching one time all over this blah blah blah. Now you say I'm old play, I'm by Buruk. Say yes, but me that time you play, I stop long, most me say double him. This blah Buruk is stop long as, him by me putting on front, not this blah long, not a blah side by me putting long as. Many families can speak of mothers giving birth under trees with only leaves to wrap their newborn babies in. No one knows for sure how many mothers and babies died during childbirth or simply because they lacked basic medicine in the bush. Today, women and families are still living with illness and symptoms left untreated during the war. Widows and orphans and children born from rape make up a key part of today's Bougainville population. The nuclear family no longer exists for many households here as they cope with the pain and the cost of their missing fathers, brothers and sons. It was a miracle for me to see people sewn up just with ordinary needle and not even having the anesthetic or whatever they need in the med proper hospital to, to be able to survive. And these, these uh, women, especially women nurses, the ones who have shared with me were very dedicated. And from what I heard from them, you know, there was some really dreadful situation they dealt with way up in the mountains. Women we, who couldn't give birth well and they assisted them as midwives and things like that. If the baby can't come out, uh, what we had to do is, is, is wait and uh, uh, come to the stage where, where, where uh, the relatives also understand that nothing further can be done. Uh, and we are now waiting for the mother and baby to die. Mm. Because at that time it was not a normal situation. You can be mistaken for, for killing the mother and baby and you will be, you know, be dealt with by the relatives. There was no law and order. Me, I used to feel very sorry for the uh, widows, especially at times when men went into to the bushes to gather food for their children. The women, I mean the offense when, when the men came back, the offense just looked and stared like there was nobody who would bring them something from the bush. Huh? Our families were torn apart. Some became resistant and some became BRS. And then that went with the family. So we started talking to those of us in you know, the BRS said, you know, enough is enough. The women are suffering because we, we born them. And then we tell them, you know, we, we cry for you. 
And if I'm crying for you and telling you this, and if you don't listen, and if anything happens to you, it's too late to cry. I've seen women cry during the conflict, even at the times when those on the other side, other Bogan villains were killed, whom we saw as enemies. So there were women who didn't see any difference. To them, a child was a child, a Bogan villain was a Bogan villain. So we had a lot of those type of experiences during the, sorry, during the conflict. When men with M16s come into your home and you're only eight or nine, there's nothing you can do. They would have experienced things against their own nuclear family, against their wider family, their cousins, aunties, uncles. They've probably seen someone being killed. Either, you know, We deal with people here who've had their father killed in front of them. We deal with people here who've had their mother raped in front of them and those sorts of things. From the way I used to see it, it's, it's, it's all to do with youths, you know, youth revolution. And these are young people who are very, you know, illiterate. I mean, it's just needed somebody above them to convince them to do things, and they just went for it. So they went out and they stayed out in camps, and with all the people who, who told them, taught them new ideas, uh, new ways of, you know, hating other people, new ways of doing things. So as a result, you know, you had a group of youths who, you know, definitely I can tell is really uncontrolled. Huh? We work on stuff to do with alcohol, we work on trauma, we work on negotiation skills, personal development skills, communication skills. So we try, and, we try to help the young men develop as many skills as they can. So when they go back to the village, they feel that they are able to contribute in some way. Some blood time now, because all beginning yet, I raise him all questions. Uh, why not something come up also? Why, why is this? Why not all some plus schools he close up? We have to start, we have to, you have to try and make the child understand why this thing is happening. Ah. Don't try to explain him long all this rap beginning. He got, you know, reason why people also are walking this place, something come up. Ah. So all not been savvy, some maybe the grade six students all, all must not know, understand him really, really, ah. But then by you looking, time oil lose him, time crisis ego was now. Some of our students, oil lose him school, they all go join up. Man blow me too, and plus I'll give him half time, all of a kidney. Because first one beginning blow me. I mean, I'm being stable on great preparation now, crisis even because so interest blow him, I mean, like go on school straight. Papa, me, by me come up, labor blow you, I mean, I go on school. So I'm worried long and picking now, I go on making papa long and to me much looks a long as me picking me like go on school. Me be save to call same. Do you me if I one time gun and me and me and by non up loss solving problem? And you were asking to solve by mama one time picking me by die. All same now, you me must come low understanding long. You me must talk by low mouse to solve in a low in a low gun. So you, you, enough is enough. And then we started telling the leaders and even ourselves so that negotiation is the only way peace talks. The women uh, have always been the, the voice of sanity, the voice of peace, and they've been very, very... Uh, instrumental in, in convincing their sons to, to get rid of the guns. Uh, and the, the, the women would be the envoys between the different factions walking through the, from village to village, uh, advocating um, reconciliation and uh, getting rid of guns. And I think they've, again, uh, they've achieved that without force. Me, first of Mary Long come, Lucim Bus, and me come straight Long section 19 where all uh, pespla peacekeeping posse been come. Mm, me being 
ไทม์อินทับิวลงครับสมิตโกเซมีพลีสมีไลกิงกูดพลัสซินดาวน์มีมีนับยูนิสลงไปยูมีนาคิสิงวันพลัสซินพลัสซัมติงมีพลับิงซาปาอินับไทม์มีพลับิงสตาบลอมบุสมีคัมเอาท์ Because on our plamery, on no, or you've been stable on bush yet. Now, me must show him example. I say, me, me like him, me like go on palace below Mister Red. Me come down now, me come on palace. So all, all of that all line been stable on bush on Mary. All look at me and talk. Why Mary go finish here? But for me plan must stop. Stop on me, me plan must be any man. So all he come, all he come now. Me plan bung one time all Mary long here. Me plan walk one time all them. I said today, I'm looking for some peace process. I'm planning to marry, but long come together with them, strong in peace. Time me come down. Me try, me me can can rice. Now me talk to some more. Sorry, this plan first time long me taste him rice for five years. Me can can tulip now. Oh sorry, me can can tulip one time biscuits. How many years me no been taste him? That during the crisis, you will hear a common term that said, "Now me blog at and stop same. We are now all the same, and we are starting from this, from the bottom, and we're moving up together." And that happened between the genders too. But what made the women really stand out was that they, despite all that had happened, they stood up and said, "Let's, let's work from what we have, and that's nothing." Most of the children have lost their loved ones, the parents during the crisis, and the majority of the children they have one side living, and the other side died. So I can say that this project started out from my heart. Because I have concern for these children, we call it Arava Children's Center. We didn't want to call it orphanage because we didn't want to, you know, say that name to make the children feel bad or what. So we just call the project Arava Children's Center. I move around in the marketplace, on the street, in the stores, and you can hear and you can see, mm. and even in the in the village. Mm. Where they come from, you can see if, if they are wearing torn clothes, and if they are crying all the time, and if uh, the mother is beating them, then you can see definitely there's something wrong. They they don't really come out to 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 tell us their needs. Huh? And, uh, there's only few out of all the widows I know they're getting help. The majority are they are with the community, so they can't really come out. Yes, I think was a. ยูมีลูกวิดาวเซมยูนอกัดมันลูกสปอร์ตที่มีปลาโซมีปลาเอ็นดีมีบีอุลติมุสวันเซโลอุลิกาโตโลมันบลูงอลอุลิเคนฮาลวีมีปลาลูซัดลูกวอล์คิมเฮาส์วอล์คิมเฮาส์ลูกเซมบอลสัมพลัสสัมติงเว้มีปลาลูเมรีนูนับวอล์คิมลูกเซมการ์เดนตูสมมติมีลูกเซมมิสตับลูเพลสการ์เดนตูเอ็ม I don't have to work in the garden, I don't have to work in the garden, I don't have to work in the garden. I don't have to work in the garden, I don't have to work in the garden, I don't have to work in the garden. The political leadership just cannot leave it to an extended family or to the immediate families. To, 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 to handle the issues. Um, they had to be helped you know, financially. We had a war you know, that had you know, made many of our young mothers, you know, widows, many of our kids you know, become orphans. It's a problem that you know, had to have a, 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 a body like a government to be able to, to do something. <laughs> There's a passionate belief everywhere that education is important for a better Bougainville. 
Parents and caregivers are not the only ones putting school fees and classrooms first for their families. The return to school has been harder for the children who grew up too quickly during the war. For the young foot soldiers of the crisis, a return to the classroom can mean being a 20-year-old student struggling to read and write in a room full of 10-year-olds. Since after that time, I have a feeling that I am the same long me I am traveling to school and I am like like that's all. I got all traveling boys can all same with our same age age one time now or same long all mainland now where in all being stuck in such a long crisis now all not being got such long some education now all me plan now stuff one time so I think by flower or some me plan kind man now work on stuff or some some plan more. Was tough on normal age now. Look on school good. Now me plan some plan. Me plan. Me plan. I'm rushing finish on him. Age no education now. Suppose crisis in our staff. I'm now. I'm this plan. Yeah. I'm. Was him. Suppose me plan being go through long education system. I'm not best year long. Me plan by kissing work now. Growing up in jungles and learning to kill have taken their toll on a generation of young Bougainvilleans, with jungle brewed alcohol providing a way to deal with that trauma. So I was too scared when I first came in 99 to go into the market because a lot of young people and you know frightened to see them because they have their rasta hair and they had their heads tied with the you know BRA army type of clothing and they would be walking around and quite rough looking and, and talking very rough because they were under the influence of uh, JJ and uh, this really upset me inside. When young people don't have much of a sense of self-worth they don't feel I can contribute anything to the community, they don't feel I can contribute anything to the family. In fact, they feel that they've let everyone down. Um, they feel that they've got no future. Things got out of hand and such good young people attend to something that, that was not good for them. And to this day, I haven't seen positive results of how they can be helped to integrate them back into their communities. It's so heartbreaking. These are the future of Bougainville, and you see them running around like this, aimlessly, not knowing what to do in the future. You see a sick Bougainville. We can talk about whatever plans on the political level and development, whatever. But if those things come in place, who is going to do that? Bougainville's destiny lies in the hands of its damaged youth. But their future also depends on how much can be learnt from the troubled past. For the leaders of this generation, Traditional reconciliation involves shedding light on that past. Those who have killed will have to return the bones of their victims to their families and allow them to complete their grieving. But for those who have raped, no reconciliations have taken place. Atrocities against women and girl children have been buried in silence as women once more sacrifice their own healing in the interest of peace and moving on. These are the things that war has left, the scar there, the pain is there for us to live with. If you know that you have killed someone, you will never forget in your lifetime that you've killed someone. So it is also good for the murderer or the killer himself to go and dig up the bones, even they have, if they have to find just a button or a shoelace or a bone, they must bring it back to the family so that they cry over the bone or whatever and they give it a decent burial 
it's also healing for the murderer himself and for the family. I mean, I know that people who, maybe families who lost nearly all the whole family, maybe two or three still surviving, but, but no, they don't really talk about it. But in their heart, you know, they, 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 there's this, this hatred, you know, it's still there, you know, it's, it's, it's there. But they don't really speak it out, no, nobody talks about it, you know. It is important that the um, truth had to be told, truth had to be revealed. And our society um, supports, it supports uh, that sort of an approach. That's why, you know, um, uh, we have our reconciliations. And this is why uh, reconciliations have been the number one priorities uh, for people of Bougainville to able to, to free yourself, you know, of, of what, you know, what, what was bugging, you know, bugging you inside, you know, pour it out, share it out. Um, let just some kind of a justice, you know, be done. Now, time you play discuss one thing, Mary or Mary now, Mr. talking more. okay, what you do is just, you look and you observe, you think ahead, and remember you have your kids. The kids that we have here now, because even though no more see Amy come up, we are still standing on the time bomb. That is how I see it personally. Anytime you pull the fuse, we go back to square one. In 1996, I was saying, let's, not, let's end this war before year 2000. Because if the con war, con uh, war started in 1988, by the time we reach year 2000, the conflict will be 12 years. And if we have a generation that are born in 1988, by 2000, we will have a generation that will forget, forget that they are brothers and sisters. Women in the peace process, women building the peace, it doesn't necessarily mean that all women believe in the peace that is happening now. What it really means is that women want to have education for their children, they want to have health for their children, they want to have security for themselves. But the ideology behind it is different. You have all of these women who have these totally different political beliefs, and yet they're united in the socio-economic um, task that is ahead of them. My message to them is that don't lose hope. Don't feel that nobody's going to care for you. And we're going to move forward, to look forward, to build better Bougainville, a new Bougainville, a new spirit. Stand up for what is right and never give up. When you know, when your heart tells you that what you are doing is right, do it. If you are for peace, continue to work for peace. Continue to march for peace. There's no U-turn, no reverse. Just go ahead. No matter how hum humiliated you are, because they can pull all your teeth out and they can burn you alive, but the desire for peace will stand. Yeah.